High power. Oh. <laughs> you see, I was born and raised in Montreal, Canada. And you had to be 16 years old to go to the movies in Montreal. There had been a big fire and children were ah. trampled and all that kind of stuff. So you had to be 16 to go to the movies. So I never saw all of those movies that you mm -hmm. are bringing out, the TCM right. brings out. You know, I never saw those mm -hmm. until I got to California. Right. And uh, so I never saw how wonderful Ty Power was. Right. And I complained to him that one of his favorite movies and one that really made him a very big star, I think, is Blood and Sand. Yes. And I had never seen that. And do you know that that sweet man arranged for a screening at Rogers and Cowan mm -hmm. so that I could see the movie? I mean, a few other people from the company came, mm -hmm. but there I was, and it was all done for me. And I, I will That's never nice. forget him as long as I live because he nice. was just wonderful to work That's with. That's wonderful. What about what about Dietrich? There and and that's someone. Talk about someone. Uh, people in show business always like to tend to their own image. I don't think anyone did that better than Marlene Dietrich did. If there's one thing we could learn about movies and being in them, it's do what Marlena did. She learned about every light, every cucaloris, the shadow things learned about makeup, learned about mm -hmm. wardrobe, learned about everything. And she knew her lighting better than anybody on the set. Right. <laughs> and she would say to the cinematographer, you know, I, I'm, I'm at a place where I could use a little more light here. And he'd say, Marlena, you don't need it. We, we don't have a little light there. She'd say, darling, I do. And she'd open this big trunk that she was lined with the phone light. rubber. Yeah. She had the bloody lights. <laughs> don't tell me I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she had von Sternberg trained her. Well, so there yeah. you go. Yeah. Maybe that's the point. Sleep yeah. with the photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Merle Oberon did it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Billy Wilder, how did he direct? Did he just let the actors have their head? Did, how, did, how did he direct? Mostly. Yeah. Uh, because he was dealing with pros. Sure. And he, he looked to be sure what he was getting on the screen. Remember mm -hmm. that in those days, we didn't have mm -hmm. the video screen that, right, right, right next to the camera the telling you sat, what the, the shot did, is. Did he sit next to the camera? He like, sat next right. to the camera or he stood did, next or did and you yeah. know and you didn't see what you were getting until you saw dailies. You mm -hmm. know, uh, right. yesterday's tonight, tomorrow's mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Right. And so he, he mostly let everybody do their thing but with Marlena he was going to get a performance from her that he really knew he could. Mm -hmm. And uh, because most of her performances were being very placid, beautiful creatures who had right. very monotone things to say, you know. Mm -hmm. And he would literally, I swear to God, sing song a line for her. Marlena, that line, not da 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 do da 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 Just give her a rhythm. And he not a line. He wasn't giving her a line reading. Wasn't he wasn't giving her a reading, yeah. but he was giving right. her a tone for right. where it was to go. Right. And her performance, I thought, was absolutely oh. extraordinary. Of all of the things she's ever done, I think it's one of her best. Don't yeah, because she he did make her dig down uh, oh. because her character has yes. to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, of course, I love the writing. I love the humor. Yes. That is, is yeah. there. And how much of that, that, that whole byplay in the movie between uh, Lawton and Lanchester, how much of that was true to life between the two of them, back and forth? Was there a, was there, was there a little true life in the, in the Very story? true, very true, true, Alan, because yeah. uh, I would have lunch with them quite often. They had uh, sort of a little bungalow on the set at, at mm -hmm. Goldwyn Studios where we shot this in mm -hmm. Hollywood, and then of course the dressing rooms on the stage, mm -hmm. but I'd be invited to come to lunch. Right. Because like I said, I became his little baby doll, you know. <laughs> and and so I watched this kind of go on. She would try to watch his diet, you know. Mm -hmm. Charles! <laughs> Don't do that, Charles! <laughs> and she was just wonderful. And I'm sorry that I was 
uh, too young, when she was playing at the roundabout and some of the places, the, the kind of cute saloons mm -hmm. in, in Hollywood, they were more theatrical houses than saloons, mm -hmm. uh, but she was really very good and very funny and very wonderful, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to see her do those things. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the, one of the stories separate from uh, the movie tonight that I, I read on your website that I loved is you came, to, you came to Hollywood, you went to Hollywood High, and you actually worked at the ticket office of Brahmin's <laughs> Chinese Theater. <laughs> I mean, how show business -y was that? Well, being, being purely showbiz all my life, my math skills to this day suck. <laughs> and I got hired as an usherette when they used to sort of lead people down the aisle with a flashlight and get them seated, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I stood there at Grauman's Chinese Theater in my little uh, red tunic top and the red uh, and the black pants and my little flashlight, and I'd see people to their seats, and then I'd stop and stand at the top of the aisle and see Ethel Merman and uh, Mitzi Gaynor and June Haver and Betty Grable all of those gorgeous ladies, and I was so envious of them, and I'd say, oh dear God, please, one of these days, let me do musicals like that. I really want to do this. And then one day, I got promoted to Candy Girl, <laughs> which was okay, because everything was in numbers of five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50. I could deal with that. I could make change for that. <laughs> and, of course, when it wasn't busy, I wasn't selling popcorn, I'd run over to the island stand and watch the girls do the, the big 20th Century Fox musicals. Mm -hmm. One day, the cashier got sick in the, in the ticket booth, mm -hmm. and I got promoted to cashier. Now, I told you, my math skills weren't good, but they said, look, there's a machine here, and tickets are $1.98, and if there are two of them at $1.98, and they give you $5, you put in $1.98 twice, and then $5, and it'll make the change. I was $40 short that night. <laughs> and I got fired! <laughs> And I said, there's a day to your door, I put this, I said, it's terrible. One of these days you're gonna find out I didn't steal that money, I'm just bad at math. They, they came right out and accused you of stealing Accused me of stealing math. the money, and one of these days my footprints are gonna be here, you'll be sorry. <laughs> Guess where my star on Hollywood Boulevard is? <laughs> right in front of the damn box office. <laughs> and that I did not pick. That is pure serendipity. Right. Now, isn't right. that incredible? It, that's guardian angels sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, uh, when, when Witness for the Prosecution came out, was there the big Hollywood premiere? Did you get to go to a premiere with the, the stars and the director? With, there was not a big premiere for, Holly, for Witness for the Prosecution. Oh, okay. there, there had been for my first job, which was Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, yeah. which... Of course, you're going to run a film noir. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Right after the Kiss Me Kate double bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't remember where I first saw. Mm -hmm. Oh, it must have been at a screening. Sure. I wish it had been at Frank's house. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I, I don't remember. Isn't that awful? Mm -hmm. But now listen, stop and think about it. That was done in, what, 59 or 60? So that's almost 60 years ago. Yeah. Witness? Wow. Yeah, 50, Witness. 57. 57? 57. Sorry. Oh, Ray. I was young. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm it here, is 60 years child. ago. I'm your child. Oh, my God. Well, I'll tell you, after I think you've whetted everybody's appetite for this classic, and, you know, we could, uh, we'll have to come back and do this again sometime because you are absolutely fantastic. Well, you're, you're so kind. Nice. I thank you. And thank you. We'll put it together, Palm Springs for Rudy Lee. Put it thank together. you. Thank you. Your darlings, thank you. Any questions after the show, you can ask me, okay? Thank you very, very much. God bless you all.